Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's finally time for WCTV shows to get underway. I'm Logan Lepiscopo, the host for JSW, and joined alongside me, Seth Adams. Sir, it's great to finally be back. I know, I know, right? We have this gorgeous studio. I mean, look at all these lights. I'm gonna morph into the wall. It's such a great, <laughs> such a great atmosphere. I mean, we, it's been a really long time, but we're back in action. We're gonna get things going. We're gonna get things rolling. Today, today's actually our first day back in the studio, back recording, back making new content for you guys, and also getting us a ton of experience. So. We're just, we're just all excited. Everyone here is super pumped, and we can't wait to get started. We're going to have a lot to talk about today as we have all our fall sports that have been going on. But it's finally to get you guys up to date in case you haven't been checking on your own. First, quick rundown of football. They have moved down to a 1-7 record as they're suffering a loss to the Geneva Golden Tornadoes. That came at a score of 43-29. to Seth, we'll have Spencer on later, but just a general thought about football so far this year. Football has one word disappointing. I feel like everyone who has been a part of it and watched it and us who have broadcasted it have expected a lot more from this football team from going from four and six overall last year to one and seven right now and losing to teams like Teal that they could have won Allegheny in overtime, which I feel like set the tone for the whole year. It has just been truly a very upsetting and disappointing year for the football team. Yeah, that, that's to put it nicely as we try to do here. Moving on to a more positive side, our athletics here. The women's and men's soccer both currently in the PAC postseason play. Both just wrapped up their first round games. Dive a little bit into the men and women's. Awesome. Soccer has been woo lately. Woo is soccer right now, and it's great. After having, they both had a not so great year last year. They're both coming back. They're both in the playoffs. They both won the first round of the playoffs. So they're, they're having fun. They're playing, and they're just playing their hearts out, honestly. They got a playoff game. Both of them have a playoff game Wednesday. Mia Hankins will get more into that later. But the teams are looking so great, and it looks like they're having so much fun out there. And it's just a completely team, completely different team, excuse me, from last year. Yeah, the women were able to clinch a win over the presidents after 110 minutes of play. They won in overtime. As for the men, they came out in dominant fashion, won 4-1 to one over Chatham. As Seth alluded to, Mia Hankins will be on to discuss the two teams with us later. Our last segment that we will be covering here is volleyball. Now, volleyball just suffered two pretty heartbreaking losses. They lost to Geneva, three sets to two, and then you played Teal, the team just below you in conference play and drop that three sets to none. Yeah, um, it's a really disappointing loss and it really hurt because Teal was at the bottom of the PAC, not really looking too good and then getting completely swept by the worst team in the division. It's just, it's just not a great look. They played a great game against Geneva, fantastic game. They just got out in the last one at 16-14, we'll get to more of that later, but that, that that just left a bad taste in the mouth in the mouth and it's just like not great as of right now yeah we will have joey Sharillo coming on with us later to discuss the volleyball side of things and just a quick rundown of our other athletics that won't be covered in our main segments today cross country the men's and women's side just wrapped up their pac championships the women placed seventh in those pac championships the men placing six out of ten the women seven out of eleven some names to mention for the women's side of things, Grace Tanksley, she earned all PAC second team. And for the men's side, Andrew Casper got all PAC first team honors, as well as Quentin Weaver, a transfer graduate came in. He got all PAC honorable mentions. And our final two sports to cover that had been going on, you have golf, PAC fall championships wrapped up. They will pick up where they left off in the spring. The men currently six and the women currently seventh in terms of PAC championships. And then wrestling, they just had their traditional, their annual black and orange wrestle offs. They will have their first match or competition rather at King's College for the Ned McKinley Inventational. That will be on November 4th. So we'll be right back with our first segment where we will discuss, as Seth said, the disappointing Waynesburg University football team with Spencer for Terry.
Welcome back into JSW. My name is Logan Episcopo, again, your host. I'll be joined by Seth Adams and our first guest of the episode to talk about the Waynesburg University football team. It's none other than Spencer Frateri. Spencer, thank you for joining us here on the panel today. Obviously, the team just got done with a 43-29 to loss. What are your thoughts on that game? Just a general thought. Unacceptable. I mean, you lead all the way through the first half and most of the third, and then you end up somehow, some way, finding it, uh, uh, some way to lose. I mean, it's just unacceptable in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, 29 points, fourth quarter. Um, thoughts? Listen, guys, uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, there, there's a team, and you guys mentioned that you said disappointing. That This team is very disappointing, and a lot of their losses this year are just quite frankly unacceptable. You have the game against Allegheny, you have a game against Teal, and now you have this game against Geneva where you're leading throughout pretty much the whole game, and then that fourth quarter comes around and you allow those points. It just can't happen, and a lot of that relies not. I know Barbara went out with an injury, but a lot of the uh, how they led, because of how much they led by, a lot of that relies and, and is put upon the coaching. And, and the coaching it needs to be better, especially with these two more games left in the season. Yeah, if you guys can't tell, we are frustrated with how the team has been performing, especially with the preseason polls came out. Waysburg was expected to finish the middle of the PAC. Now they're going into Bethany, and it's going to be a battle for who's going to finish last in the President's Athletic Conference. So continuing to talk about that game, we had a very clean first half. You know, you're leading, going into halftime, just one penalty for the team, and then you get 12 penalties in the second <laughs> half. It's been the storyline, but just what happens there? What, what, how does that transpire? I, I wish I could tell you guys. I really do. I, I want to be able to sit up here and say, this is why we're getting all these penalties, and this is – I do not have a solid answer, and, and, and it's sad that we don't have a solid answer because it's now that the last week was week eight of the same thing over and over. I know it sounds repetitive. I know if you guys listen to the broadcast or the Wooson Productions, you hear us say, oh, most penalized team in the pack. You've got all these penalties. We're an undisciplined team. It's the fact of the matter. This team continues to penalize themselves and, to con and continues to put themselves in these situations. There was a, it was a very clean half. We were up 26-14 at the end of the first half, and because there was no penalties in that first half, that's why Waynesburg was able to capture that lead. But then you go into the second half, you have all these penalties, you have an injury, you don't use your players to your full advantage. Things just crumbled. Yeah, and like you said, it just, it, they just crumbled, and, and it just seems like there is a huge discipline issue for this team and what do you think is the root or the cause of this discipline uh, discipline issue and how can we fix it for next year to hopefully have a better season oh look i don't want to sit up here and call anyone out but part of this is supposed to be on the coaches i mean this again this we're heading into week nine now dwayne's versus one and seven you have eight straight weeks of pretty much the same things when it comes to penalties we are the most penalized team in the pack. We've been the most penalized since week one. How is that not a problem that's been fixed? Uh, of course, it's on the players to you know, know the game and know what you can and can't do. But at the end of the day, we talk about undisciplined all the time. How is this not a thing? How is this not the most important thing in these coaches' meetings, players' meetings, practices? This should be the most important thing, and this should be the thing that's talked about most wherever these guys are, wherever they're on the field, off the field, in film sessions. This should be what is talked about more than anything in this entire organization so trying to change the mood here trying to bring some light into things they head into bethany a winless team on paper waynesburg is the favorite they should win this game we know how the season has gone though there's been a lot of games that waynesburg had a hold of the win and just let it go how can waynesburg go into bethany and win and dominate from start to finish. And look, as much as I want to sit up here and slander this team, th this is a good team on paper. They've got, I think, one, I think, if not the best receiving core in the pack. They're, they don't have the, I mean, there's the Scott Frazier, the Paduzies of the, the, for the PAC, but in terms of overall core, you've got Dakota Romatino, who's obviously a fourth year. He's had great years here. Isaac Trout is only in his second year, and he's had a phenomenal year. Then you have the young guys like Xavier Nelson, Adrian Letta, Tyler Foley, this is a very, very good receiving core. Then you go to your running backs. You have Justin Flack. You have Zane Cauley. Hunter Cameron hopefully will be back next year. Now, unfortunately, we can't say that Bethany is a guaranteed win just because of how this season has gone. But on paper, this is a team that should go into Bethany. I know you're 1-7. I know the season is kind of trashed, if you will. But this should be a game where these guys just go in. You take out all your anger on the Bison. You score five or six touchdowns, I would love to see. You've got this receiving core. You've got your running backs. Hopefully, Barber's back because if you couldn't have told, told 
from last week's game. Barber is the clear-cut quarterback. He's the clear-cut number one, especially after that Geneva game. So I'm going to take it back a little bit to the beginning of the season, Spencer. So we played Allegheny and uh, lost in overtime. I believe it was 39-36. A very tough loss and just kind of like a heartbreaking way. Do you think that started the collapse of this year and just kind of threw everything off and kind of screwed everything up? Well, yeah, you said, the per- you said it perfectly. It, it was heartbreaking. I had to call that game alongside my partner, Will Yoakum. And it was a very slow start to this, the first half. And it's that very slow start to the first half is kind of what every game has been this year. I mean, we were down big. You only had one touchdown in the first half, and it came from a 99-yard touchdown return from Xavier Nelson. And then in that second half, you see Barber come in. You see a lot more things on offense happen. The defense starts to really cl- come together and, and make a lot of plays. But I think the root of the problems come from that first game. It was a heartbreaking loss. You take them to overtime. You almost complete the comeback. But it was really that slow start in the first half that has really been the entire story of the whole year. And we talked about the frustration. What's gone wrong? What's gone bad? What the team can control? What they can't control? Looking at this team, what is the biggest bright spot you've seen? You've talked about the receiving group, obviously, and Samuel Barber showing that he has the potential to just just wipe the slate clean. He should be the number one. What else has looked solid that you think we can look forward to for next year? Because at this point, this team's not playing for much than yeah. to find people that will be well for next year. Yeah, uh, like you said, the receiving core looks good. Um, Barber, when he's healthy, looks very good. I think the defense in some ways, and it's very, it's very hard to tell this defense is excellent some days and they're slow starters other days. But I think the main thing is with Justin Flack leaving, you're gonna have a young Zane Cully, you're gonna have a young, fresh Hunter Cameron. I think if you really look towards that running back crew, that running back duo, it sucks because we really wanted to see all three of them this year. It would have been very, very fun to watch Flack in his fifth year. You have Hunter Cameron after that ex- explosion he had last year and then the introduction of Zane Cully. But I think next year with those two young running backs, Waynesburg football should be and hopefully is a lot of fun to watch. Well, Spencer, thank you very much for joining us on the panel. If you'd like to catch the next game of Waynesburg University football, it will be covered on WCYJFM. Our announcers for that game, Keegan Robbie, Tyler Zeman, it will start at 1 p.m. When we come back, Seth and I will stay here, but Spencer, we'll see you later. Mia Hankins is coming on to discuss Wu Soccer. You're watching WCTV, where we aim to bring you the best local coverage of what you care about most. Everything from local businesses to hometown sports and the latest weather. We're keeping up to date with what you need to know about issues that affect our campus and our community. We're telling the stories that matter, celebrating our past, our future, and our potential. So tune in for all the latest buzz right here on WCTV Channel 14, Waynesburg. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. We're going to be getting into soccer now who have had such successful seasons already. And we have Mia Hankins here with us today for our soccer analyst. But we're going to start with the women's side of things. Mia, this team has really just switched things around and completely turned a new leaf, you could say. So if you could just tell us what has this team really done so far and how have they improved from this year to last year? Yeah, the women's team has been really impressive this year. They have an overall record of 9, 6, and 2, and a conference record of 5, 3, and 2. They've definitely been a lot more impressive than last year's season. Um, they just beat WNJ 1-0 in the pack quarterfinal matchup. It was 0-0 the entire game, and then um, in overtime, uh, there was a goal by Haley Gilcrest, who's a freshman this year, and she's starting, which is new for them. They've actually had a lot of freshmen step up this year, such as Jules Moorbacher, who is the sister of Tyler Moorbacher on the men's team. Alexis Greenleaf is another freshman who has done a lot um, for the goalies. Um, Alexis was actually injured for majority of the season with a rib injury, but she made her comeback debut at the WNJ game, and she had 13 stops at that game. So that was big for her. Um, some upcoming games for the girls team. Um, they're going to play in their semifinal pack tournament game on Wednesday, November 1st at Grove City, which is the top seed. So that will be a tough game. They did lose to them previously in the season, but we're hoping to see it win. And you talked about how a lot of these freshmen have really stepped up 
for Waynesburg and the fact of that, you know, Alexis Greenleaf, you had Gilchrist score the game winner. You mentioned it's kind of a, a change. You didn't have this youth last year or this year. So how can these young players continue to step up as they now move into playing that top seed in the bracket? They can definitely just keep doing what they were doing. Um, they're very good at, def at defense. Sorry, excuse me. They have had a bit of a dry spell when it comes to offense recently, especially in the last game against w &J. It took them a while to warm up to their offense. However, we're hoping to see some improvement with their offense in the upcoming game for the PAC tournament. So, like you said, the offense the offense has been struggling a little bit lately. Like, they've only had – their shots on goal was just nothing compared to – they only had, I think, about – yeah, they only had four shots on goal, and they were able to get a goal out of it. So, last time they played Grove City, too, they struggled offensively, got a quick goal at the beginning, but then kind of died out. How does this team keep up the offense and keep it rolling as of now? Yeah, when it comes to offense, they definitely need to start off with a bang. Um, the last game against Grove City, senior Kate James scored a goal within the first minute of the game, and I feel like that definitely helped get their momentum going. The Grove City didn't score at all in the first half. They did, however, have two goals in the second half. So as long as we get the momentum going in the beginning, I think they'll be fine. And then just keep up the defense in the second half. Yeah, we talked about Alexis Greenleaf. She actually did not play in that previous matchup against Grove City, so that should be a big indication but kind of now to pick the brain of you as being a collegiate athlete now you're going in you're playing an undefeated team in conference play Grove City's 9-0-1 in women's play what's a mindset going in knowing you're playing the highest seed and playing somebody you lost to before when it comes to playing the highest seed as a collegiate athlete myself I honestly love being the underdog it, there's not as much pressure on you to win however if you do win it's huge and for this women's team it's definitely going to be big if they win Coming off their season from last year, it's definitely more impressive this year, but we're still looking for a win against the top seed. I'm hoping they win. I think they'll do well. As long as they keep their offense up, like we said, I think they'll be fine. So this team, they um, they had a game against Grove City, like you said, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year. more Not like a couple weeks ago, I should say. And they were up one nothing. And then the two goals that Grove City did get off of were a penalty kick and a free kick. So... This Waynesburg team, I feel like they can get the edge. And do you think they'll, they'll be able to get the edge and get the win? I think they will be able to get the edge. Um, I think they move really well when it comes to offense. They just are a little impatient when it comes to their shots. So I think they move the ball well, are a little more patient with their shot selection. I think they can keep the score, keep the lead, and eventually win the game against Grove City. And now kind of the transition, obviously, you're doing both the women's and men's here on this segment. The men's team, they also played in their first game, had a dominant 4-1 win. As Seth said, talk a little bit about the men's side now and how they've progressed this season. Yeah, the men's team has done really well this year. Again, they have a lot of freshmen stepping up to help out this year, such as Zachary Johnson. He has the most goals in the pack right now um, with 12 goals on the season. He also has the most game-winning goals, which is five goals. Um, also, players such as Nick Bryan, who's a sophomore, he scored his first collegiate goal the other day, but we've seen a lot of work from him this season. Um, also, junior Connor Jacobs has been a big asset to the team this year, as well as Michael Frankis, who's the goalie. So they played Chatham the other day, and they won 4-1. to one. Um, It was a good game. They played really well. Zachary Johnson scored two of those four goals, which is very big coming off as a freshman starting immediately, which was good. Um, Chatham did score to start the second half. However, uh, junior Carter and Jacobs scored the team's fourth goal to end the game. So the men have been, like you said, they've been doing fantastic once again. But they did play Geneva the last game of the season, and so they tied 3-3. Three to three. So how does this Waynesburg team take that extra step and get that one extra goal to beat Geneva. What do you think that they need to do to get to that part? I think when it comes to the men's team, I think they are really, f they're very fluent whenever they play. They're all their, they're past the ball really well. They score really easily when it comes to playing teams such as Geneva. They had three goals, which was good. Against a top seed team like that, that's hard to do. However, I think that if they continue their offensive efforts, then they'll be fine. I think defense is also a big thing. Obviously, Geneva did score three goals against them. As long as goalie Michael Frankis keeps up his work, I think they'll be good. And you mentioned one name specifically when it comes to that freshman class. You look at Zachary Johnson, as, who's already established himself as one of the better players on this team. How can Waynesburg and Geneva, knowing he's a big part of the offense, continue to get him those opportunities 
against you know a team you tied to and now you've got to face them again back at their own home turf when it comes to Zach Johnson I think he's a great player I think as a freshman he's definitely made a name for himself I think when it comes to getting him the ball getting him goals I think just keep him open as much as you can have him in as much as you can even though he's a freshman it is hard to play a lot as a freshman especially if you haven't had any experience However, he's done really well so far, and he showed us that he can keep up with teams such as Geneva. So as long as we keep him in, get him the shots that we need to get him, I think he'll keep scoring like he has been, and eventually will beat Geneva. So we've been talking about a little bit of the goalkeeper, Frankis, and how underrated he's been. He's been doing excellent so far as well, so we cannot get him out of the picture. But that is going to do it right now for soccer, but don't go anywhere. We're going to have Joey Chirillo come on and do some volleyball. We'll see you soon. Have you ever been to the Everly Library? If not, you should, because it's great. They have books of all different genres. History, biography, fiction. Try The Evolution of Life, Life of Pi, or Jurassic Park. So what if books aren't your thing? Try movies, like Frozen, or TV shows, like Lost. Books and DVDs aren't the only thing, though. Take a trip to the second floor. Welcome to the Writing Center. These tutors will tell you everything you need to know about writing a paper and the help advisor essays. Now let's head back down. Behold, the Knox Learning Center. Need to print something out five minutes before your next class because you procrastinated? No problem. You can also print off pictures of dogs. Because, well, you can. So grab your homework, laptop, and textbook, and study diligently. Bring your lunch, too. Actually, you can't. That's illegal. Now you know the Everly Library. Stop by any time. Seriously, it's open all week. Welcome back, everybody. Let's get right into it. We got some volleyball coming up, but we got our analyst with us today, Joey Chirillo, who has done all the volleyball stuff. So, Joey, let's get right into it. They're, they're, they're having an all right season, you know, it's, it's okay, it's not, it's not the best season they've had, but it is a huge improvement from last year to this year. Last year they only had three wins, this year they got eight right now. So Joey, take us a rundown, give us a rundown of what's going on. Well, Seth, Logan, thank you for having me. Um, but this volleyball team is not the best, but they are better than them what they were last year. At eight wins right now, uh, they're only with one win on the pack so far. Uh, they were looking to get their first win against Teal last their last matchup. Uh, Teal also had one win as well with seven losses. Uh, they sadly fell to them 3-0 in the sets. Uh, they almost pulled out that victory in their first set, 29-27. Uh, to They kept going back and forth, but Teal came out with the win. Uh, they had a 9-3 rally going on for them. Uh, so that really just led them forward. Teal got that win. Then, then they continued to beat on the Yellow Jackets. 25 to 14 to 25 to 18 in those last two sets there. So Teal was a disappointing loss because we really were looking forward to getting that win, but it just didn't happen for the Yellow Jackets. And to take just a small step back, looking at the game against Geneva, mm -hmm. <laughs> absolute heartbreaker. We did the Wusin production. We were all there watching that fifth and final <laughs> right, set. Yeah. Give us a little bit of a rundown of that game. Maybe some people that stuck out and maybe the impact of missing Emma Hyatt. Yeah, uh, missing Emma Hyatt. Emma Hyatt was out on a family matter, um, but Emma Hyatt was definitely out, and it definitely showed. She was a big, big help through the season. She has lots of blocks and lots of uh, kills down on the floor there. Um, Emma Hyatt just not being there, was it just fell off, and their rotation was off. Their rotation, you could see, was off going into that game. Um, lots of different things going on. They were leading very early in that first set, and they did win that first set, but... They were leading really early on and they could have ended it a lot sooner, but they sadly didn't. That rotation, I think, just didn't help them out there. They really should have kept going and sticking with their people that were hot. They were sending in a lot of freshmen to serve and they kept getting into the, into the net and stuff. So that just didn't really help them there. They were up two to one in sets. They really should have won that game. Uh, but unfortunately, they just didn't pull it out. They lost to Geneva there on that night. Uh, but I think their biggest things are their rotation and that's basically what's really suffering them in this season so far. So let's talk about some more key players who have played big 
roles in this volleyball team and the person I think of is Jordan Stein and she has been absolutely incredible laying out for the team doing whatever she can to get the ball over diving into I almost saw her dive into a wall when I was announcing a game she will do anything so Joey how has she become such an important role for this Waynesburg team and kind of like a leader for this team yeah well the junior libero she's been doing fabulous this season there is nothing holding her back she has done perfect last season she had a uh, career high and a team leading high of 447 digs and right now she's already surpassed that she's at 474 digs this season and with a 5.78 digs per set so far which is just stellar and especially with two games coming uh, left on the season you can't beat that so clearly and I'm hoping she'll get to 500 digs and clearly I think she will but she has just been the star out of this kind of fire that's going on here uh, for this volleyball team. She's been stellar so far. She's got to 1,000 career digs, which is fabulous for her. Um, and most of her season highs, came, season highs came from just about two weeks ago uh, with Washington and Jefferson and Westminster games, and they were both on away games. So she's clearly continuing to get better, unlike some other players on the team, but she continues to get better, and she's continuing her career to get better. And you alluded to the T.O. match. They lost three sets to none. How do you think this team looked at that game? You know, going in, Teal's below you in the conference. You end up losing three sets to none. Was there anything that may have stuck out, any positives to take away from losing to the only team below you in the conference? I don't know if there's much to take away that's positive. There is a little bit of positivity there as you were very strong in the first, ma uh, the first match set there sorry uh you got to 29 to 27 that's doesn't really happen you don't really push that team you don't really push teams to keep going it normally ends at 25 there um so that was a i guess the only key highlight you can you could take from this that you did really well but then they fell and they only got to 14 points the next set they didn't keep pushing that boundary that wall um and then they just got up to 18. so it's one of those things that I think it's mainly you got to look at Emily Grossman, the coach there. What What's her idea for this rotation? What are you trying to accomplish? And I've seen a lot of seniors starting out and then they're not in at the end of the game. Is that because they're tired? Is that because you want to get freshmen and sophomores in just to see what your future looks like? I don't know. For me, if you're, le if you're in the pack and you're starting off, you shouldn't be rotating those freshmen and sophomores in that early. Uh, maybe towards the end of the season like we are in now where you know you probably won't be getting into the playoffs. You know your seniors are going to be leaving and you know that Stein's going to be going into her last year. You might need to look into what you have to go into. Um, I know one senior, Tristan Smith, she hasn't played pack games. She hasn't played since St. Vincent back in September. So she might be starting to do that early, uh, which might have hurt this team in pack play. So we have been talking about key players and people who have been in that rotation, like you said. Oh, we look at uh, women like Emma Hyatt, Paige Mortimer, mm -hmm. Maddie Dayton. Hyatt having 173 kills, Mortimer having 168 kills, and Maddie Dayton having 151 kills. They have really been kind of the main components in getting the kills and the points for Waynesburg. But it seems like those are kind of like the only three, and it kind of falls off from there. So can you just elaborate on that, how why that is and maybe it kind of relates back to that rotation like you were saying mm -hmm. of how these three are kind of like the main three but maybe we need to get some more people to do more i think that if they keep maybe one of those in and keep that wall of woo there as we've used a lot in our broadcast keep that great wall of woo in for a little bit keep dayton in and then maybe put a freshman and she can learn from dayton there and she can keep moving forward along with uh, these experienced players um, dayton played awesome in the first couple of games that they had in September and she was one of the uh, players of the week in the pack but all of her highs were in September um, they haven't really gone anywhere since then and Mortimer has been getting better and better um, her offensive skills have gotten better at that great wall of woo as we say um, so I think if they maybe do a rotation where put an experience in keep Stein in because Libera, she's got to stay in pretty much the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then keep Dayton, keep Mortimer, maybe pull one of them out every now and then, put somebody else up on that line. You want to keep that great wall of woo going, just like any other franchise. You want to keep that name with you as long as you can because you want that legacy. So we want to keep that here at Waynesburg as long as we can. Well, 
Mr. Cirillo, thank you for joining Seth and I on the panel. The ladies will face off against Chatham this Wednesday, November 1st, and they'll end on their senior day, November 4th, against Allegheny. That's going to do it for our first episode of JSW here in the 2023-24 school year. Again, from myself, Seth, Joey Cirillo, Spencer Frateri, Mia Hankins, and everyone that helped out behind the scenes. Stay tuned for more WCTV content and every single week a JSW episode. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.